Right, so in this video, uh, I'll, I'm going to explain to you uh, the concept of uh, personality theory uh, from trait approach uh, proposed by Gordon Alport. So he was the uh, one of the among the early uh, figure in psychology that proposed uh, trait approach, and this approach is completely different from. Uh, from previous approach that you have learned uh, previously in this course. So, in short, trait approach believe, uh, people who proposed trait approach, they believe that human personality is basically consists of several traits that is more uh, uh, formed or shaped by, by current experiences, by their experiences. And completely separated from their prior experiences so uh, people from trade approach they uh, they orient their theory towards a more uh, prospective um, outlook rather than seeing personality as an outcome of a cumulative past behavior so this is completely fundamentally different from a um, psychoanalytic perspective so this is uh, Gordon Alport so he was an American and he was quite famous in uh, place in in placing uh, the fundamental concept of trait theory. So he was very uh, skeptical and very critical to uh, psychoanalysis that was quite famous in um, in the U.S. Uh, during the first uh, decades, uh, the, the first three decades of the nineteenth century, and he was. Uh, he was curious that uh, that human personality is not that uh, determined by their by human past experiences. So that's why he was famously uh, said that he said that people in psychology they were obsessed by leading the lives of individuals into the past, while actually we, the common uh, human, we we basically we orient ourselves we try to lead ourselves towards the future so that's why there's a disconnection deep disconnection between how we actually live our lives then how psychologists try to understand how our lives works so basically this this deep disconnection uh, uh, dissatisfied uh, outward so that's why he started his own theory by basing uh, personality as a as a function uh, of human survival uh, towards their future instead of their past so I'm going to mention several contribution that Alport uh, have, uh, has made to psychology um, so he he is famous uh, of of bringing personality into the mainstream psychology because it was not that popular before uh, because in the US people were very focused on explaining how behavior was determined and so they so instead of explaining personality people were obsessed more on the behavior uh, and he also formulated a theory of personality which is which traits uh, pr uh, plays a very prominent role in that theory and also Alport tried to challenge uh, tried to challenge uh, psychoanalysis the, the, the classical uh, psychoanalysis concept on several points uh, the first notion that he made before was he did not accept uh, the the proposition that unconscious forces always dominate our personality especially in normal mature adults because as we know that psychoanalysis placed a heavy emphasis on abnormal behavior so this this is not uh, especially uh, is a very uh, has only a, a very little uh, relevance to our to the majority of population which is not the abnormal population so that's why Alport sometimes uh, criticized uh, uh, Alport not uh, he famously uh, criticized psychoanalysis by missing the point 
as they try to explain a very small part of the population, the abnormal population, instead of explaining the, ma the normal majority population. So he also said that unconscious perhaps important, but in a very specific uh, population that is the one who, that those who has problems with their uh, psychological condition. So that's why uh, unconscious process, unconscious dynamics may not apply, might not apply to, might not apply to normal healthy adult. But it could be relevant. It could be relevant to people who has problems with their psychological condition. And also, Alport believed that we, the, that the human, generally we are not a prisoner of our childhood conflicts. So he did not believe that uh, our past experience, our past, uh, uh, our past lives, could have an effect to our present lives, and. Uh, Alport put a very high emphasis on uh, the notion that we are more guided by our present or our outlook towards the future instead of our past experience. So it's very clear that he was very different from uh, from the classic psychoanalysis that put a very high emphasis on past experience. And Alport also opposed the idea of collecting data from abnormal personalities. This is something that Freud did in the past. So instead of explaining or trying to explain a human personality uh, from the view of abnormal people, why not asking the actual healthy people um, and in investigate how they view about how they, their own personality. Uh, and Freud Freud, uh, Freud saw a continuum between normal and abnormal behavior, but Alport says that it's a very clear, there is a very clear distinction between uh, people who are abnormal and also normal. So there is no continuum whatsoever. So it's a very clear distinction between people who are disturbed and people who are healthy. So that's why in his theory, Alport spent a lot of time to explain what it is like to be a mature and healthy uh, personality. So this is something that, that psychoanalysis is, is lack of. So it kind of like complement the, the older theory of personality. And to Alport, uh, even the, the, the most abnormal, the, the abnormal personality is actually function an infantile level. So it would never reach the mature level of human normal personality. So that's why it's, that's the clear distinction yeah, between normal and abnormal because abnormal people would only uh, only reach, only function. So their personality actually only function in the infantile, in the child, in the childish level of their personality. While the normal people, they they could reach the mature level of uh, of personality development. So that would be the major differences between normal and abnormal people. And the next would be he put a very high emphasis on the uniqueness of personality. So he would say that every human would have different traits or different combination of traits. So that makes every person would, every person has a unique uh, combination of uh, several traits. So that's why he opposed the idea of general or, or global theory of personality. <laughs> So it's very different from uh, the previous approach that you have learned. And also he opposed the idea that uh, there is a general construct or general law that forms our personality that could be applied to every human in this earth. So that's why he argued that it's our personality, it's not a general or a universal. So there is no global theory of personality. Instead, uh, it's, it could be very specific to the individual itself. So they, so we might have different combination of traits. So that's what that's what makes us a unique uh, person compared to other people. So um, there are uh, there are some some of his views that uh, that are actually very important in psychology. Uh, so Alport saw personality as a dynamic organization um, within the individual. So even though it's a, it's 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 still a system. It's a dynamic system. 
but it could be very unique in with an individual and it could determine how our uh, behavior could form and how the thought, how our uh, cognition would form as well so uh, dynamic organization in Alport's term would be if, uh, even though personality could could be changed it could be grow yeah but it's organized in an organized form it's not a random uh, it's not a random growth so this is something that even though so even though it's dynamic even though it's um, it's ch constantly changing over time but the change is organized so it's not a random change so in this um, in this um, uh, in his definition of psychophysical means that uh, Alport saw um, mind and body, uh, mind and body, as a unit together. So it's not a separated entity. So it's basically a comprehensive unit, and it's not solely mental or biological function. So it's a more like a unity of of our organism. So that would be very different from the previous view that uh, that in psychoanalysis that views uh, mind and body as a separate entity and mind has a more complex uh, complex uh, dynamics compared to the compared to the uh, body and also um, what he meant by uh, determine here is that uh, he means that he meant that uh, our personality could activate and also uh, uh, directing our specific behavior and thoughts so that's why uh, our personality is a an abstract, an abstract entity that could uh, activate and direct our specific behavior. And this is something that the combination of our traits could lead to specific behaviors and often uh, uh, specific behaviors in which within, each, within each individual. And the way we think, the way we behave could be very typical to every one of us. So that's, that, so that, that's what uh, that makes our behavior are completely different from the from the rest of us um, and also the personality could reflect both our heredity and environment so it's a it's a combination between hereditary and also environmental influences uh, that would be very different as well from the previous approach that sees personality as a hereditary or solely hereditary or solely environmentally influenced and in a way that uh, heredity could provide the raw material, the, 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 the physiological function, and also the intellect, and the, in the temperament as well. And it could be shaped, and it could be changed, it could be expanded by the condition in our environment. So that's why uh, Alport believes that uh, both personal and situational var uh, variable are important, yeah? are important in determining our behavior so there is no one or each uh, or one factor that 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 have that has a heavy influence in forming the personality so that would be the end of the uh, first part of this lecture